Thursday, February 17th, 2022. For which it stands, one nation justice for all. <laughs> Dancing. Um, we're going to start off. We have a certificate of appreciation for Rock Hammond, who served 44 years uh, with Erie County, who just retired last month. And Rock, we want to thank you for, for all the years of service. I know as a township trustee and uh, all the years I've been in government, you've always just went out of your way to help everybody, and I think that's been your your motto and your commitment to the citizens of this county to just go above and beyond and really appreciate everything you've done for the county and the county road system and the townships. I mean, it's really been good working with you over the decade or so that I've been here, um, and I look forward to seeing you, seeing you around the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'd, I'd like to say something, too. Um, I've been able to raise a family, have good benefits, good guy to work for, and I appreciate the opportunity to make a living here at the county and do a job that I love, as you can tell. 44 years, I, you know, everybody imagines that 30 years and out stuff, or 34, whatever it is now, and I, I thought about it for a minute, and uh, I just couldn't do it. And uh, now, after 44 years, it just is not in my best interest to keep going. And I'm getting older, and I've got grandkids and kids, and I want to spend some time with them and my wife. And uh, so I do appreciate the opportunity. And you know, I've for the last quite a few years been working for Jack, and that's been not always a pleasure, but 95 percent of the time <laughs> he's been. Well, you know, when you're the boss, sure, you know, you've always got to answer to someone. And uh, I answered to him, but he always steered me in the right direction and uh, took into consideration my thoughts on things. And uh, I worked for three different county engineers in my tenure here. And uh, the first one I didn't get to know very well, but he was a, a decent man. Didn't really pay attention to what was going on other than in the office. And then we worked for Mr. Fike for years and uh, he just didn't really I think he had more interest in other things um, as well as being the engineer and things may have suffered a little bit um, bridge wise and whatnot because we didn't have monies back then but now that we do have a little bit more money to work with I'm proud to say that our roads are by far some of the best but they need to be maintained and you know that as well as I do being a township trustee but uh, Jack usually puts together a pretty good plan between him and Tim, and then it you know, kind of trickles down to us guys that run the road crew. And we've always been afforded you know, nice equipment, and uh, not always enough manpower, but we, we have enough to get by on it, and it works pretty damn good. And uh, I just want to say thank you for, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> so that's about all I got to say. Jack? Do you have a certificate for me? I do. Come on. Yes, Sammy, come on. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks for your service. Uh, you're welcome. Will you be so kind as to Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to um, thank Rock for all of his faithful years of service to the county. He's been a, a wonderful asset for the county. And we're sorry to see him go. But uh, for all of us, good things always come to an end, sometime or other. And uh, I want to thank you again, Rock, for a great job, a good man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. plans immediately are you doing uh, you know what my wife just got after me last night <laughs> not not that way i've got a damn good wife i really do um she came out into my little body shop that i've been running since the 80s and it's always been work at the county you know my daily and then come home and do whatever needs to be done with the kids but now that they're older not so much but and go out work, work in my shop and tuesday nights are date night for 
every year. Her uh-huh. and I. Oh, awesome. And, uh, and it, it, you know, it's just, we're committed to doing that both of us. Yeah. But uh, she got after me yesterday because she was, you know, since you retired, you're out here as long as you were at the county, <laughs> and then you stay out here till 9 or 10 every night. <laughs> so, well, how is this retirement? <laughs> no, this is tiredment. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. Yes, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. You're, you're welcome to stay for the, the budget hearing. <laughs> oh, or you guys, oh. <laughs> we won't be offended if you sneak back to the body shop. Well, actually, Dick wants me to come over and have something for me over there, I guess. Yeah. Very good. But thanks again, you guys. Yeah, I thanks, appreciate Jack. it. Thank you very much. Let me show there, Jack. Congratulations. Thank you guys. Hank, do you have some issues? I do have issues. Um, <laughs> today's issues, well, we'll keep them work-related today. So. <laughs> um, sales tax numbers came in for February. Uh, $1.5 million was the amount. That represents November sales. And again, that's still kind of at a record-breaking pace. Um, so year-to-date, compared to last year, we're up about 25%, almost identical compared to 2020, and then slightly more to 2019 year-to-date. Um, any questions on sales tax? Okay. Uh, we did get our casino tax. Our first deposit of the year came in, and this represents the last quarter of 2021. Again, that amount was $249,000. And comparing that to last year for the same period, uh, last year was $215,000. And then back in 19, that period or 2020 that amount was 223,000 so casino tax is still running really really high um, we budgeted 900,000 for the year we probably have an opportunity to surpass that based on these last couple payments we've got and then uh, finally gas tax also came in uh, that was 317,000 for the month of February which is up from last year, which was 301,000, and it's slightly down from 2020, which was 320,000. So, you know, again, gas tax is about four and a half percent up year to date compared to last year at this time. So, any questions on those? That's that's really it for various issues. Thank you. Yep. All right, we're moving on to the budget work session, and we've got Carrie and Rachel here. We do. We'll Let me start do, with them. Yep. Uh, actually, they're going to be on page, starting on page two, three, and four. Give me a second to get situated here. Typically, we present the three funds that we present for the uh, Board of DD, represent the levy fund, the waiver fund, and the capital fund. So what you'll see on page two, really the only thing I want to point out as far as, um, you know, their, their, their budget's pretty much within policy. Uh, salary and benefits are per policy or per bargaining agreement. Um, I do want to point out m- mostly my discussions on the revenue side. As you recall, last year we rolled back um, 50% of what the tax levy was on collections. So you'll see the last year's tax revenues were significantly lower than prior years uh, in an effort to try to spend down some of the balance. So this year, we're also reducing the, the tax collections. It's not at 50%, but it's only 25%. So we'll be collecting 75% of the levy. So it's a little bit a little bit of a higher amount than last year. Uh, but again, based on our proposed budget, which I think historically their budget is always higher. Always, the actuals always come in significantly lower than the budget number. Um, so I really didn't have any issues or comments other than kind of pointing out the revenue number um, for 2022 and then on page three uh, no real comments here on the residential waiver fund Uh, you'll see the note as far as how much has been transferred into the account from the levy fund we're estimating 1.5 being transferred in for 2022 and last year 900k was transferred into this fund And if we go to page four, this is probably where I'll kind of turn it over to Rachel or Carrie. This is the capital capital fund. Uh, historically, we put zeros in the budget column and all the requests, we typically will slide in Alt-A. 
so I'll, with that, I was kind of kind of let maybe Rachel come up and just kind of walk through some of the capital items that you guys are talking about for this year. Can or sit, um, yeah, can we sit? Yeah, I can yeah. Come yeah. Up? yeah whatever's easier. Um, the only the only difference, um, I and I apologize, this was um, originally in the budget and we took it off, but the salt box for the pickup truck does come out, so all twenty eight hundred bucks does go. Um, as far as some of the other things, um, because we are board of DB, obviously we have handicap accessible um, things throughout the building, so we do need some new door. How many door operators do you get for 6,800? I think that is about three. Okay, good. They're not cheap. Yeah, I was, someone was asking a different department. I was mm -hmm. just wondering what the price was. Um, light fixtures, um, we have been upgrading all of our light fixtures to LEDs to um, increase our efficiency. We do have a fire alarm panel that's in need of some upgrades. Um, we just make sure that we're <laughs> kosher with the, with the fire inspector. Um, we do have some signage issues. Um, now that we are no longer a school and we have our one main entrance, um, we do have a lot of confusion um, when people come into our parking lot. So we've um, budgeted for some new signage um, to help people get directed in the right the right place. Um, also with the ESC behind us now in the old workshop building, um, just making sure that they, they can get to us as easily as possible and not seem so confused. Uh, we have been doing some upgrades to our carpet. It's been quite a long time since our carpet has been upgraded. so. We have several offices that we did last year. Um, we also did some offices the prior year, so we kind of paced them out over the course of the last couple of years. And we're doing the square so we can just replace what the, you know these areas that get real nasty. Um, bathroom tiles. Our bathroom tiles have not been replaced since the inception of the building. Um, so we want to get those cleaned up, some new grout, some new tile. What um, year was the building built? I'm sorry? What year was that building built? We were built in six. I said 68, 68, I think the 67 was the old school building. Right. And then the new half is 97. Okay. Just curious. Um, we do need to have our roof um, updated. So we do that. With, we have a foam roof um, and that'll be on the school um, end of the building, 1967 end of the building. Um, and then the exterior concrete. We have removed our chiller with our upgrades from 2020 for our HVAC system, so the chiller is no longer in the back of our building. Uh, there's some um, concrete back there that needs to be updated and then some um, stone that needs to be filled. It is in our uh, playground area. And so the public is welcome to use that any time of day, dawn to dusk. Um, so we wanna make sure that we don't have any trip hazards there for anybody. Um, and we wanna make an actual, like outdoor eating area if, if possible for staff to enjoy since we don't have anybody we're really eating in our break rooms any longer so we want to the COVID we kind of mixed all of that kind of eating in our building um, and then we also have some pavers in the front of the building um, at the walkway to the entrance that um, are shifting and moving so we want to replace those with concrete so that the whole entrance is concrete um, to again eliminate The foam roof, do you have people that are that you work with West roofing. occasionally, or is this just is a one-time thing? You're reaching out to people to find out who can do it? Or? No, West Roofing, this is a warranty issue. So okay. every, every once the warranty is, is expiring, um, they come out and they um, update our, our foam roof. Okay. Sounds fine with me. Good. All right, any other questions, comments for Carrie or Rachel? Thank you guys for coming. All right. Thank you. All. Thank Just reach you. out to us if something pops in your head. Yep. Any yeah, no, I appreciate your commitment to FCFC, which I think we're doing their budget next. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I talk to Hank all the time. Yeah, if you want to stick around for that, you take it. No, I mean, you don't have to, but I do appreciate you've been a very consistent supporter of it, and I, I appreciate that. They go through so much change all the time, and it's hard. Uh, it's hard for I mean, between the state mm -hmm. and the government. Yeah. yeah, I'll talk about FCFC real quick on page five. Um, obviously, this is this is a transitional year budget. Well, last year was really a transitional year. Um, as you recall, Judge Delameter had uh, the wraparound program under his jurisdiction and kind of working um, cooperation. We decided that wraparound was probably more better suited under FCFC. <clears throat> so that's why you'll see the uh, increase in salary benefits. It's really the difference is just the full year cost of wraparound, which you know we're still kind of evaluating. You know, the, the right right sizing that department together. We've had a couple retirements, a couple resignations, so we, we, we 
we have an opportunity to kind of build that from scratch. Um, Melissa's doing a great job working on that. So um, that's really the only big budget blip is, is obviously wraparound coming in there. And you'll see the footnote last year, we contributed about 150,000 for wraparound. Um, or for, for FCFC, and this year that amount will be about 220, which was basically the cost of wraparound under Devil Meter. So, and uh, no issues with revenues. You'll see revenues coming in projected more than expenses. Um, again, any any questions on this one? This one's pretty straightforward. Well, I just the services number is lower, quite a bit lower. Is that just timing? Just a, one of those things that. As it gets settled, it yeah. Let me look at see what the blip in twenty one was, as far as that. I I don't think we had a lot of outstanding purchase orders last year, so I, I off the top of my head, I I don't know. I will check. It's good. See the ending balance going the right way. And then uh, just the last one, real quick, I'll touch on. I'm back to page one. Um, this is Judge Cam's capital budget. Um, again, nothing really unusual going here. This is one of those accounts that you, you could see historically the ending balance had been growing. So now that they're going through the big computer uh, project, you'll see the supplies number is significantly higher because we're going to have a lot of training going on this year and, and, some, and materials related to that. Uh, so that's, that's the big jump with the capital budget. I know as far as the wages, You'll see budget-wise, it's it's significantly lower than 21, slightly higher than actual. I know he's anticipating possibly some overtime for some of the employees this year with this conversion, um, so that's factored in the budget. Um, so it's it's a spend more than what's coming in budget, but if you look in the past, this account's been growing, so there's significant money there for him to do what he wants to do. So I, I didn't have any issues with any of these numbers either. Any comments or questions? Okay. That's it for today. Well, he's going to have some lawn repair work from the uh, semi truck that oh, drove I did. through the courthouse. Oh, so I, I did. I did look into that. Um, really? I reached out to former administrator Pete Daniel as well to see if he had. You know, I looked through some of his old emails on that. A lot of what I could find was mostly related just to the road, Kelly Road. It wasn't the building per se. And uh, administrator, former administrator Daniel said he does not recall ever having those complaints, and he suggested that the judge reach out to the prosecutor. To figure out if there's something that we could do, but I, I couldn't find anything that we had where we had had that issue. It was mostly related to the road. I know I found some emails between, I think Pete, the board, and Milan Township at the time with the signage of Kelly Road, but nothing that had to do with the semi trucks that are pulling into the parking lot and turning around there. So I, I did check with Pete. And yeah, he said two in the last week or so that have wow. turned, and they can't make the the turn is too sharp. Yep. To, yeah. And so there, there were big rocks there to prevent that. Well, the one semi just drove, drove over them. Over the rocks, the rocks, the rocks don't matter. The semi like trucks. glacier. Oh, um, so yeah, there, there will be some <coughs> some yard repair out there. Okay. Well, they did hit the bridge then, right? Yeah. Well, that's, damaged I, the that's, property. Just that's where I remember the last time we had one go down there. It was stuck under the bridge. So yeah. at least at least that's not the case. But yeah, now we have an issue with our tearing up our parking lot. So we got to we got to figure out the solution to that. But like, apparently we didn't. We don't really have anything from before that okay. addressed with it. So. All right. Thank you. Um, we have a capital request here from JFS regarding a new Ford Escape for $25,000. Yeah. Yep. What's this for? Uh, it's fully funded by one of their stimulus grants. I think it's for adult, are there like adult, adult protection? protection. Yes. So Do they have a car now? No, I don't believe it. I believe this is a completely new vehicle. For that specifically so are we going to be on the hook for a car forever for them once this grant goes away i think grant goes away if there's not a hand-me-down from someone else i, I we're not gonna Our we're not gonna for 20 years <laughs> do they I, did it say, i don't think it said how much usage they actually think they might get out of it, it did i don't not. think it's going to be like an everyday 100 miles yeah. a day kind of thing but Yeah, I don't care. I just want it noted that this is a car that's grant funded and we're not going to be buying cars for the fun of it. And I noticed that the ownership tag is going to go to adult probation, technically. Was that the, the sure. direct? Look at that sec top of the second page. I don't know if that's the actual title. Or is that 
part of that, that protective services and it just falls under their umbrella? Or? I honestly don't know. I would assume it would be under JFS, under them. Because it doesn't say that. It does say. Yeah, it says Erie County Adult Probation. Yeah, it probably should say Erie County Commissioners. I don't think adult probation can buy cars, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <laughs> I'll fix that. That's the only question I had. Okay. Uh, resolutions? We can do a couple of motions first. Motion to cancel the following meetings in March. March 3rd, 7th, 10th, 14th, 17th, 21st, 24th, 28th, and 31st. Second. Mr. Schauer? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. That leaves us with Wednesday meetings in March. Uh, motion to reject the following bids for the sale of surplus Erie County property and to authorize the county administrator to rebid these parcels. I'll read these out, I suppose. Home Gardener Road parcel number 33-62006.000. Boost Road parcel 39-62006.000. State Route 250, near the former outlet mall, parcel number 50-60524.004. Cleveland Road in Huron, parcel number 42-62086.000. And Woodlawn Avenue, parcel number 32-62006.000. Second. Mr. Schausner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Uh, motion to appoint the following to the Erie County Transportation Improvement District for a period of one year. Mike Parker, Oxford Township Trustee, Connie Ward, Mayor, Village of Berlin Heights, Tim King, Regional Planning Director, Gary Whitaker, Senior Transportation Engineer, and Marsha Walters, Planner. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Uh, move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of confirming an agreement with the Erie County Sheriff in the Village of Kelly's Island. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into a memorandum of understanding between the Erie County Board of Commissioners, Erie County Department of Job and Family Services, and AFSCME Ohio Council 8, Local 3616. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into an agreement with Plant and Moran. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution, Board of Commissioners, for the purpose of entering into an agreement with Lori Stith. Second. Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into an agreement with Julie Young. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of establishing the Erie County cybersecurity policy. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Um, yes. Does anyone you want to talk about that, Hank? Well, it's just part of our initiative uh, since, since I came on board as far as trying to upgrade our security uh, with our infor information technology infrastructure and just making sure that we're, you know, improving our firewall and keeping the bad people out. Uh, we've also had a um, cyber security training that was man mandatory for all employees. So if you didn't attend that in person, we, we are mandating people to watch the uh, video of that. Um, there's just so much risk out there that we feel like has not been addressed over the period of, of years and this is one of the years that we're trying to address that so this is just to just to kind of get the ship going as far as protecting our um, information technology infrastructure so that's what that's about and good employees I will appreciate be, you doing that employees will be required to sign off acknowledgement of that so that way you know if there's issues with people not wanting to sign that we will just eliminate access to the internet they won't get it if they can't comply with our policy so it's pretty straightforward thank you Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of entering into Amendment Number 2 to the agreement with ACI Payments Incorporated, FKA Official Payments Corporation. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of authorizing payment for services as services and supplies provided. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose of executing payment of then and now certification. Second. Mr. Schaffner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution of Board of Commissioners for the purpose 
of accepting the highest responsible bid for the sale of real property no longer necessary for public use located at Maple Avenue, Castalia, parcel number 33-62007.000. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution to Board of Commissioners for the purpose of accepting the highest responsible bid for the sale of real property no longer necessary for public use located at Huron Avery Road, Milan, Ohio, Erie County, parcel number 550-00981-002. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution Board of Commissioners for the purpose of accepting the highest responsible bid for the sale of real property no longer necessary for public use located at Huron Avery Road, Milan, Ohio, Erie County, parcel number 50-00981 decimal zero zero three. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution Board of Commissioners for the purpose of accepting the highest responsible bid for the sale of real property no longer necessary for public use located at Harris Road, Sandusky, Ohio, Erie County, parcel number 25-62001.000. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Move for adoption resolution Board of Commissioners for the purpose of accepting the highest responsible bid for the sale of real property no longer necessary for public use located at Bogart Road, Castalia, Ohio, Erie County, parcel number 33-62008, decimal 000. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution Board of Commissioners for the purpose of accepting the highest responsible bid for the sale of real property no longer necessary for public use located at State Route 269, Castalia, Ohio, Erie County, parcel number 33-62015, decimal 000. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution Board of Commissioners for the purpose of declaring certain Erie County equipment surplus and ordering same to be sold by internet auction. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Yes. Move for adoption resolution of the Board of Commissioners for the purpose of declaring certain items surplus and ordering same to be discarded or salvaged. Second. Mr. Shockman? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. That's it. That is it. Public comment? You just need to be excused for next week's meeting. I have a conflict. Is there a motion? <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shockman? Yes.